So today I want to talk about uh, the Jungian astrological perspective, which I think addresses uh, this year, 2020 in turmoil. We have here uh, the beginning, actually this uh, engraving from the 17th century. Before I talk about that, there are uh, some things that uh, Mary Plum has said in The Mountain of Astrologer, TMA. We are living with the collapse of systems in every imaginable way. I may have an especially emotional group of friends and family members, she says, but every day I, many people I know, are crying, enraged, frightened, bewildered, and confused by the enormity of what we are now living. It is surreal and disorienting. I'd like to write about the managing all of this, but for now, we know we are all in this together. And perhaps we can have compassion for the unredeemed parts of ourselves that may be rearing up as we sit together in the containment of our shared solitude. So far as I know, Mary Plum is not uh, Jungian uh, trained or informed, but she's right on the money here. She's exactly correct. Having compassion for the unredeemed parts of ourselves that may be rearing up. Now, these are not only our personal unredeemed selves, if you will, un unredeemed parts, but also unredeemed parts that are collective parts. So what I want to do today then is lay out some fundamental Jungian points of view. I'll say a little bit about epidemics and pandemics. Then I want to go into the astrology of 2020 and end up with some news we can use. So, archetypes in astrology, basic planets in our cycles, epidemics, and then the U.S. return. Let's go back now to the uh, initial uh, illustration that you had up. This comes from the Welcome Collection. Um, their caption on the etching from the 17th century says, the planets and signs of the zodiac send down their influence onto the body of a man on earth. Women representing nature, and they say with a question mark, and medicine stand on the left while scholars watch and dispute on the right. I think this is a rather rich uh, engraving. It uh, harks back to an earlier period, the one where above as below and below as above, which Debbie mentioned, was uh, part of the mentality. This is uh, granted from uh, an earlier century, somewhere in the uh, 1600s. We don't have an exact date. But I think it's very interesting to take a moment to ponder the various figures. Are the scholars actually talking with the women figures? Or are they just talking among themselves? Are the scholars paying attention to the man on the ground, the patient? Or are they just talking to themselves? And it's striking that the scholars are not looking up at the zodiac. What do we make of that? When we come to the women figures, they're different. There are three of them. That makes them reminiscent of the three fates, if you will. And they are doing different things. The one woman on the left with the scales, okay, is holding the scales in her right hand and a container of some kind in the left, a lidded container, a pot of some kind. She seems to be looking up to the sky or up to the zodiac as if to say that uh, some kind of balance is the issue, perhaps. The second woman in the middle has a ball in her hand and she's winding something on that ball. And that's actually the man's hair. And finally, the woman uh, 
closest to the center holding the uh, staff is uh, looking at the scholars, it looks like, and pointing with her right hand to the man on the ground. So this suggests maybe the three fates, the moirai, the one who measures, like Asus, okay, the one who cuts the thread of life, and Cloto, the one who spins a thread of life. They can, collectively, they control the mother thread of life for every mortal from birth to death. There's another uh, copperplate engraving that I want to share with you, which also I think uh, says uh, a lot. And this comes from Michael Myers' Atalanta Fugians from 1618. So this is also 17th century. I've always loved this because uh, I think it expresses much of what uh, is the uh, foundational attitude, if you will, the, the basic orientation in analytical psychology. So the poem says, let nature be thy guide whom thou must follow from afar, willingly, lest thou err, whether she lead thee not. Let reason be thy staff, and it must strengthen thy experience. Thy vision, that thou canst see what lies about far and wide, that reading may be as a lamp glowing bright and clear in darkness. Thereby mayest thou prevent the danger of things and words. So we have here in the actual copper plate, uh, the woman figure uh, striding on ahead, uh, her scarf billowing out behind, which suggests to me the crescent moon. That's my association. But she's carrying in each hand fruits or flowers, nature, the products, the, 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 uh, what nature has to offer. And you see above her to the left, uh, the conjunction of the sun and moon, so that the yang and the yin, the masculine and the feminine are combined here. Following her is this uh, male figure. Notice that he is taking uh, his stride uh, as measured by nature. He's putting his foot exactly where nature's footprints have been. He's carrying a lamp. He's got uh, a walking stick and he has very thick bottle glass uh, spectacles. <clears throat> 